Hello everyone and welcome to Craig Talks Shite episode 4. Here we are, another episode in and you might have noticed that I am in my bed today. Um, I'm not in my bed because I'm tired or I'm fucking depressed or anything like that. I'm in my bed because, to be honest, the fucking house is freezing and when I'm in my bed I feel warm and safe. It's like those people that are like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have central heating, so, you know, just put a jacket on. Well, when I was growing up, I didn't have central heating either. It was fucking shite. The whole point of progress is that you're not meant to go back the way. So one of the videos I've just watched is, I believe, from Germany. They go up to a money painting and, and they throw fucking mashed potato over it. And you know what? You know what I noticed? There was plenty of fucking butter in that mashed potato, by the way, because it wasn't a, like, lumpy mash that we used to get at fucking high school. This was, like, the good quality fucking silky mash, so I'm hoping that's fucking vegan butter they put in that, eh? That's no council fucking house mash. That's, like, that's no fucking smash. That's, like, been taken time. They've mashed those tatties. They've fucking passed them through a sieve. What have they got against paintings? You know what I mean? Again, that says another interesting thing to me, that these people are targeting art galleries. Like... Is this the areas these people hang out? Or are they targeting a more affluent class? And by the way, before I go on, some of you might have noticed I'm talking a bit fucking funny. And the reason I'm talking funny is that I've got a gum guard in because I grind my teeth at night. But not only that, I've chipped one of my fucking teeth. And every day I keep sticking my fucking tongue in it. And it's driving me and it's actually driving my partner probably more mad because it sounds like I'm chewing gum 24-7. So the only way to stop me doing it is to put a fucking gum guard in. I'm like a, I'm like a cat with a wound. I just can't stop fucking licking it. So anyway, just watch this video. Uh, the mashed potatoes. And one of them says, oh, Are you scared of mashed potato? No, people aren't scared of mashed potatoes. People are scared about the unhinged behaviour of the people who throw mashed potato onto a fucking painting. It's not like, they're not scared of the item. You know, they probably have consumed mashed potato in their life. I wouldn't imagine there's that many people who are actually scared of mashed potato. I mean, don't get me wrong, there probably is a phobia. Oh, there's a police going by, probably a way to stop another fucking climate protest somewhere. Probably not. Live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Nobody gives a fuck out here, to be honest. I could be burning fucking oil 24-7 in my back garden. Nobody would say fucking jack shit. I was about to move on from it, and then literally, I just got an alert on my phone. Climate protesters, or sorry, Just Stop Oil, have just turned up at Madame Two Swords in London, and they fucking pied Prince Charles, or sorry, King Charles's waxwork. Now, I've got no love for the royals. I didn't give a fuck about the royals. You know, they always say, like, oh, they're so good for the country. Oh, well, would you like to be a royal? Would you like the life of a royal having to do all this? Yeah, actually. Yeah, if they were to fucking swap with me, I'll happily swap with a royal. I'll go around the fucking world. I'll go and shake people's hands. I'll fucking live off the taxpayer. Not a problem. It's not a problem. And do you notice as well, some of the people who say that, oh, you know, well, it's taxpayers' money going towards a good cause. You know, we're, we're, they're doing so good for the country. They're happy to fund that fucking family. But they're not happy to fund, say, fucking a child in Africa. It's like, it's two very fucking different standards, isn't it? You'll fucking fund it when you didn't have a choice. But if you were given the choice, I'd like to know if you would fucking fund the royal family. I personally wouldn't. And here's the other thing, right? So mashed potato, I've jokingly said they passed it through a seven that. They've got chocolate cakes or whatever it is they've pied them with. I wonder if these folk are having a wee Great British Bake Off before they go and fucking, go and damage some kind of property. Like, oh, Tarquin, uh, what are you baking to pie the fucking waxwork with? Oh, well, I've got a lovely, um, I've got a lovely eaten mess uh, going through the back there and uh, I've got a double chocolate fudge cake on the boil. Like, oh... <laughs> Uh, Tamara, Tamara, how are the potatoes looking? Oh, they're good. They're really silky. I'm just about to pass them through a, through a seven, add the butter. Vegan butter, of course. You know, people are starting to interact with me a wee bit now. I got a message from one of my pals saying, oh, don't forget the eco-protesters in Edinburgh letting down SUV tyres. Like, how schnidy is that? How schnidy is that? To go out in the middle of the night and start letting down people's tyres. That is, like, borderline arsehole behaviour. In fact, it's not borderline, it's over the line. Like, to go out in the middle of it, you don't know what these people do for a living. You have no idea. They might drive an SUV, aye, but what about if one of them's like a critical care nurse or something like that? You're letting the tyres down of someone who you don't know, and they'll say, well, you know, we're not, um, you know, we're not causing a major inconvenience. Well, tell that to somebody who's potentially in the hospital waiting for that person to arrive to do an operation or something like that. You know, Three minutes to half an hour, 45 minutes could be the fucking difference between life and death. But these people are so fucking 
focused at being selfish. They do not give a fuck. All they can see is the cause. They don't see the bigger picture. And you know what? They might accuse me of that. You know, they might say, well, we're doing this for the bigger picture because, you know, it won't even matter if uh, if there's if there's someone dying because the whole planet's going to die. I'm not being funny, but, like, see, thinking back, the planet's been dying since I was about 10 years old. Whether it's a fucking you know, the Millennium Bug, or Al Gore's fucking rising sea levels, we're all still here. Scotland, the weather's still pish. I would actually quite like some global warming in Scotland. And you notice as well, it's no global warming anymore, is it? It's fucking climate change and all this and that. They just fucking tweak it and change it anytime something changes because they want to fucking keep it relevant because they're so intent on wanting to push all these changes through. And you know what? I do support a lot of them. I don't think we can rely on fossil fuels for the rest of our day. I don't. But, you know what? Offer an alternative without doing, like, stupid fucking shit. Like saying you care about the fucking planet and hunger and stuff like that. And then fucking wasting food. I mean, there's three protests. You've wasted a fucking start on mains and dessert. You should call yourselves, like, Just Stop Three Courses. I've just watched it again here. The first thing... She says, if the subtitles are accurate, because I know that sometimes they do misrepresent what's being said to suit whatever the agenda is. The activist says, people are starving. People are starving. Your pal's just fucking throwing an absolute fucking massive mashed potatoes over the fucking painting. You could have gone and fed folk with that. Like, where is the boundaries here? Like, this is just, is, is there no elements of just pure hypocrisy in this? It's mental. And then she goes on the next line. Something like, and all you're afraid of is tomato soup. Who's afraid of tomato soup? I fucking love Heinz soup. It's the best tomato soup, in my opinion, that's ever been made. I don't imagine that, like, there's that many people who are scared of tomato soup. Unless you're walking up with a fucking soup kitchen full of it and tipping a fucking boiling pot over their head. Nobody's scared of tomato soup. This is just, like... This is just a way of justifying, like, if somebody says, oh, it's not right to put tomato soup over. Oh, why are you scared of tomato soup? And then she goes like, I'm afraid because science tells us that we won't be able to feed our families in 2050. Well, do you not think it'd make sense to start fucking saving some of the potatoes and that now? Fucking feed your family now. Then you be wasting food now when there's going to be a fucking catastrophe in the future. You know what I mean? Save every fucking drop you can. And then she says, I'm like, oh, this, this painting's not going to be worth anything if we have to, if we have to fight over food. Can't really disagree with that, to be honest. I mean, you can't eat a painting. You're not going to be able to sell a painting if nobody's going to be able to buy it. I mean, but it's not the point, is it? I mean, that's a bit of history there. It's like an achievement. It's like, I go with the analogy, like, you know, like, film critics. Like, the easiest thing in the world is to criticise and to tear things down and destroy. It's very fucking difficult to create things through hard work and talent. So to me, running up to a painting and covering it in food stuff or whatever is just fucking lazy. That's all it is. It's lazy. It's shock protest. That's what it is. But nobody's shocked. They just think you're a fucking arsehole. I mean, this is just the thing. It's just all... This is what I'm going back to before. It's like just cycles of chaos constantly at the moment. It's just like never ending. They just want to keep you in a constant fucking cycle of worry and anxiety. I look at the bigger picture of things, right? See all this climate stuff, right? All this, like, shortages and chaos and things. And, oh, I better go and put my fucking tinfoil hat on. But in the UK today, right, it's looking like Rishi Sunak is going to be the new Prime Minister. Nobody in the country got a vote on that. He's just fucking waltzed in. After doing all the furlough shit, his fucking decision to put all this extra money into the economy, which is potentially the reason why we're seeing things go through the fucking roof now for inflation, right? He's now been handed the top job in the country. How many is that in the last six months? And I found out today apparently Liz Trust can claim something now. From now to the end of her life, I think it is, she can claim 120 grand a year. This is fucking jobs for the boys, by the way. This is jobs for the boys. These fucking people are laughing at us. They're laughing at us. Anyway, the conspiratorial part of this is not just that it's jobs for the boys. How many of these world leaders that are going into positions of power at the moment have got links to the World Economic Forum? Because I think Rishi Sunak does. I think Liz Truss does. It's almost as if, and again, call me a conspiracy theorist here, 
that people are going into positions of power in the government to take orders for people who are not the fucking electorate. Nobody voted for this guy. How is he the Prime Minister? How the fuck are the Tory party even still in power? It's like they're down to their fucking dregs. Bojo was talking about coming back. I mean, that was the guy that was fucking chased out, what, less than, what, six weeks ago? There's something very sinister going on here in politics, by the way. They're trying to clamp down on people. They're trying to remove people's rights and they're trying to make us powerless. And they know what they're doing. I want to know who they're taking their orders from. In fact, I think I know who they're taking their orders from, but I'll leave you to go and have a look at that yourselves. Anyway, comedy podcast, last two episodes, all I've been doing is fucking ranting like a madman. That's it. That's what politics does to me. Because, to me, it's just a big game. It's theatre. It's a play. They're all in on it. They're all laughing at us. Fuck them.